Welcome back Iron Man fans to the continuation of my Iron Man technologies. In the last video, I made an Iron Man exoskeleton for my arm and a repulsor system that mounts onto it that shoots a huge burst of high pressure fuel and ignites it to create a fireball. Now in today's video, I want to return back to electrolysis reactor technology and make a new reactor more powerful than all the previous models that can fuel multiple weapon systems in my suit. Now my previous reactor ended up rusting over again, so this new one will have to be made out of very corrosion resistant material. So I went to the store and got a sheet of stainless steel, alkali resistant rubber, and a bunch of fittings and hoses. I followed the same build process from the previous reactor and cut out 13 discs from the stainless steel, 12 gaskets from the rubber to act as separators between the steel sheets. And this time, instead of making the back plates from acrylic, I made them from a thick sheet of steel to hold the reactor together and handle much higher pressure. Now a key mistake I made with my previous reactor was only adding a single outlet. This made it impossible to fill with water because the inner pressure had nowhere to go. So this time I screwed in two outlets, a bottom one for a water intake and the upper one to collect the produced fuel. And once everything was ready, I tightened the back plates together, completing the main reactor cell. But here's the catch with this reactor. I don't want it to look like a steel sandwich. I want it to actually look like Tony Stark's arc reactor. So I found that this would be a pretty good time to get a 3D printer and print the parts I need. Pretty quickly, I was able to find a ready-to-print 3D file for an arc reactor online, so I set it to print and waited a couple hours. And with my absolute genius, instead of printing the parts out in black, I decided to spray paint them black after they finished printing. Once the top half of the reactor was finished, I plugged in two hoses to the outputs on the main reactor cell and fed them through the newly printed part. Now for the cherry on top, I also want my reactor to glow. So I strung together a chain of LED lights and attached them to the inside of the copper coils. And just like that, the reactor that converts water, the most abundant substance on the surface of our earth, into the most ecological fuel, hydrogen and oxygen, is ready. Now to test this reactor, I added some water to the main reactor cell through the water intake hose. And now you can probably see why it was a good idea to add a second outlet. After filling the reactor with water, I connected it to a 12 volt 10 amp power supply and right away you can see a good amount of gas starting to form. Now I connected this syringe on the side to the fuel output hose to test exactly how much gas I'm producing and with just tap water this thing is already producing a good amount of fuel, but I think it can be a lot better. Ordinary water is a very good electrical insulator, and especially at a low voltage of only 12 volts, it's going to be very hard to conduct electricity and produce a good amount of fuel. So I added a small sprinkle of sodium hydroxide to some water and refilled the reactor. Right away this thing started producing a ton more fuel, nearly 50 milliliters every 10 seconds. <sighs> I want to see how well this fuel burns, so I put together a quick bubbler to filter out the produced fuel and hooked up the output hose to a flashback arrestor and a nozzle. This new reactor definitely produces a lot more fuel than the last one. The flame is a lot bigger and more stable. After a long test, the little bubbler ended up overfilling and some of the steam got into the nozzle. When the reactor gets low on water, it starts producing a lot less fuel. So I'll have to design some kind of a system that refills the reactor once I build it into my suit. Another issue this reactor has is it overheats very quickly. After only running it for a couple minutes, the steel backplate got very hot and this thing started producing a lot of steam. I mean, just listen to that. Before I end off, I want to explain a little more how this reactor works. First, water flows through the lower hose, filling the entire reactor cell, which is made up of 13 stainless steel discs and 12 rubber separators. Now when I apply an electric current to the cell, the energy travels through the water to the next steel plate, and in this process it breaks down the water into hydrogen and oxygen fuel, which floats to the top of the reactor where we collect it through our second output. 
Now, all that's left to do is make a system that collects and pressurizes this produced fuel, so I can use it to power weapons like my repulsors and whatever else I have planned for the suit.